to calm for every mood. You know, when the, when you feel like just taking a relaxed cruise, it's that. If you feel like, I feel like driving something today, it loves to rev six and a half thousand RPM, no problem. And you go through the gears and if you feel like throwing it through some twisties, it's that as well. It rewards you for whatever driving mood you're in. It's just the perfect, I believe, classic car to own. So, started out when we were a bit younger. My dad wanted to get us involved in motor racing. And he obviously taught us how to drive first. And then he got us Mark One Golfs, which we raced for a number of years. And after a while, my brother, he said to me, it was actually his idea, Stuart, we need to, we need to try and find an original Golf Mark One GTI. And we kept an eye out for, for a clean one. Uh, we, we started looking and there's very, very little available. In fact, nothing. <laughs> but eventually we did find this car and, and we contacted the guy and he was actually on holiday at the time and he said he'd been inundated with calls. He'll contact everyone when he gets back and it's first come, first serve. He's not reserving the car for anyone and that's how it was. The seller was based in Sun City or close to Sun City. So Monday morning, my brother and I were there eight o'clock <laughs> knocking at his door. We want to come and see your golf. <laughs> and yeah, we were the first people to view the car and we left and we were thinking about it. And we didn't have money at the time, we were students. And we had a little side hustle and we pulled our money together and we we're still short. So we called my old man and we said, hey dad, we need some help here. This car is like really good. Um, would you be interested in going thirds with us? And he, he luckily said yes. And I phoned the guy and there were people there looking at the car. And this guy said, no, there's guys looking. And we said, look, okay, we'll pay your asking price. We've never paid asking price on anything. This is the first and only thing we've ever done that. And yeah, so we struck a deal. When we went to pick up the car, he said those people that were there offered him more money than his asking price. So if you want to sell the car and you could probably make a little bit of money, but that's not why we bought it. The first drive back was actually, it was fantastic. Um, One of the things that stuck out to me was how keen the car was to be driven. It just feels like a car that wants to go, you put your foot down and it just wants to take off. Uh, and that lively feeling for me was what really surprised me. You know, when you're driving a car for the first time, driving at home, not on a test drive, you own it. It's a little bit stressful because you don't know if this guy's maybe misrepresented the car but the car was superb, it communicated it as exactly what we were looking for. And obviously nothing went wrong. Um, when we drove out, we decided, no, we need to put a little bit of fuel in it. And we actually battled the fuel cap. We didn't know how the fuel cap worked for about 10 minutes. We were trying to figure out how to open and close it. But yeah, luckily the uh, petrol attendant knew exactly um, how to work the thing and he helped us out, <laughs> yeah, which is nice. <laughs> the people who know what it is, they drool over this car, they hoot and wave and they get really excited when they see it. But the people that don't know what it is, just think it's a regular city golf. <laughs> and there's actually been times where we take it to shows and guys don't want to admit us to the show because they say, no, you can't bring your city golf here, otherwise I'm just gonna bring my golf next time. I'm like, no, no, it's a GTI, it's different. <laughs> I promise, I promise it's different. <laughs> So this car, I'm not sure if it was manufactured or it was assembled in South Africa, Utenhaag. So this is South African GTI, South Africa being the only market that got the four-door GTI. Uh, the European and other markets got a two-door or a three-door GTI. So yeah, just because it has four doors doesn't mean it's not a GTI. <laughs> um, I promise it is a genuine GTI. <laughs> so this is a 1984 model. It has the golf ball shaped gear knob, uh, classic, classic uh, golf. And I like the instrument cluster, the displays, uh, just that old school look, nothing fancy, but it just, yeah, speaks to me. The Golf Mark I ended production in 83. 
But South Africa produced the GTI Mark 1 in 84 as well. This car doesn't have the three gauges in the center console that previous GTIs have, but instead it has the, they call an MFA um, display in the instrument cluster and on the stalk, you press a little button and it gives you all that information that would have been on those gauges. Stuff like average speed, oil temperature, outside temperature. It's running its genuine engine 1.8 with the K-Jet uh, fuel injection system on it. They're notoriously um, difficult to setting them up and with reliability, but we've been fortunate. This one's given zero issues. The black parcel shelf also has never been cut. <laughs> uh, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's quite unique. So, if you watch any car review of an older car, all the reviewers always say, oh, this car feels so analog, and oh, I feel super connected. And you don't quite understand it until you've experienced it. Unless, or until you drive a car that's like that, you won't really understand what that feels like. And I feel like driving this car, it talks to you and you can identify when someone says the car's analog, you just think about what it's like to drive this car and it's just that feeling of being in total control of the car. You're doing all the work, the car's not doing anything for you. If you make a mistake, <laughs> it's your problem. It's very different to modern cars where there's a turbocharger and all of that sort of stuff. The throttle response is instantaneous. You put your foot down and you go. Um, with that said, it's not horribly fast by today's standards, but the pickup and the feel is incredible. The steering is amazing. You know, you just, just that small like movement and the car just goes. It's eager to please and it's compliant with whatever you ask it. But the gears are quite short. So you busy. So on acceleration, you'll be changing gears and be like, yo, I must be going so fast. You look down and it's like 100. And you're like, wow, <laughs> I thought I was flying. Uh, so yeah, the short gears make it very exciting to drive. It doesn't have a huge amount of power, but for the gears it has enough to give you that feeling of like nippiness and, and speed. So robot to robot would suit this car perfectly because when you get into the higher gears, uh, it doesn't have quite enough torque to really accelerate the car through. So robot to robot, first, second, third, it's, it's a rocket ship <laughs> with our 1980 standards. Um, yeah, robot to robot is definitely where it's at. Or twisties, uh, you know, those back roads with lots of like twists and turns, going through the gears, braking, turning. That's, I think, where this car really comes into its own and where it's most enjoyable to drive. My name is Stuart Koenig and I drive a Golf Mark 1 GTI.